I'm Rob Lacuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby, here with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, star of Flora and Son, who also co-wrote a couple of songs on the film. Joseph, this is John Carney's latest love letter to how music brings us together and makes us feel something. So what are your thoughts on the profound effect that music has on us as that, that the film explores? Yeah, I love how you put that. I, I completely agree. In a way, all of John's movies are a love letter to music itself, and Flora and Son is no exception. Uh, how do I feel about that? I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I love this story that centers around music. It's about this woman who's sort of lost in life and disconnected from her son and starts to learn guitar, and I play this guitar teacher, and uh, that allows her to kind of open up her mind and reconnect with her son and fall in love, and um, I think it's wonderful to glorify something like learning the guitar. It doesn't have to be the guitar, though. I think if you take a step back, playing the guitar is a hard thing to do, and doing hard things is something we don't do enough of in our world today. We're all so inundated with very easy, frictionless, sort of path of least resistance temptations. And uh, that's not what life's about. <laughs> like, to, to really mm -hmm. find something rich and rewarding in life, you've got to try something hard, like a guitar, maybe. Or it could be whatever else you're into. That, where, but your fingers don't really fit at first. And it's hard, and it hurts, and you have to keep going. And at first, you suck, and it, you feel like a failure. But you keep going anyway, and eventually you get better. And that's a little bit rewarding. And if you keep going, you get even better. And those are the rewards that are so much richer than the kind of instantaneous, just moment to moment little dopamine hits that you get from the way that so many of us, myself included, I'm guilty too, waste so much of our time. And mm -hmm. uh, so I really loved this story uh, of a woman learning to play guitar. Yeah, it, it really affected me. Um, there's a scene um, where your Flora and Jeff are, t are talking, connecting, and Jeff sings to her, and she's like, "Yeah, I didn't really like the song." And he's like, "That's okay," um, because he he knows when someone's unchanged. I love that's a really deep way that John Carney expresses the relationship between artist and audience, isn't it? Yeah, and it's a very unique scene. I I'm glad yeah. you point out that scene. It it was it's one of the more challenging ones to do because it's hard to you know it's. It's fun and easy to play a scene and play a song where you know you're gonna look great, you know. But to to play a song where you're like you know it's gonna fall flat, it's supposed to fall flat. It's it's is vulnerable, but I love that he did that. When do you ever see those scenes? You almost never in the rock star biopic. You almost always you see the rock star have an epiphany and write a great song, and then there they go. They're off to like you know golden records and, and touring stadiums, or if you do see them early in their career and they're failing, it's because they're still brilliant and amazing, but they're just misunderstood. And I loved seeing this moment where here's a musician who's good and who cares, but like kind of wrote a mediocre song. And that happens. That's the truth in any creative process. Whether you're a great artist or you're a beginner or whatever, you're gonna have moments, lots of moments, the majority of your moments, which where you're not succeeding. And you don't often see that dramatized. And I loved seeing how, you know, he, the character shows her this kind of like not great song. And then a few scenes later, she's like, oh, you know, I, I added some stuff to your song. Maybe it'll make it better. And he's like, uh, okay. And then she does. And then that's where they get to this great song through their kind of collaboration. And, and that that's at the heart of love story is this collaborative effort between two people. And um, to make a song together, I, it's it's right up my alley. It's exactly the kind of thing yeah. that that I love to see. Um, we're we're referencing, I guess, "Welcome to LA" and "Meet in the Middle." Um, so you get, get to actually co-write songs on this film with Eve and Gary Clark, the amazing Gary Clark, and of course John. Um, what did that mean to you to be able to to kind of dive in on that side of your artistry? Oh, such an honor! And and by the way, completely unexpected. I did not know that we were going to do that. We, so I showed up in Ireland and scheduled to start shooting, but a couple days before, 
we had some recording studio time booked. So I show up at the recording studio, and I'm like, uh, this is exciting. I'm an actor, I don't usually get to go to a recording studio, but no one sent me any song, lyrics, or a demo, or anything. What, what are we recording today? And John's like, I don't know. We're gonna figure that out. And I didn't know that that's what it was gonna be. And so that day, Eve and John, and uh, John's musical partner, Gary, the four of us made a song together in a day. And uh, it was really one of the more extraordinary days of my career. And by the way, I think made a huge difference for Eve and me. Like we were so bonded by that point. After spending a day making music together, that's a really intimate experience doing that. And, uh, and so, you know, just from that first day on, I think we had a trust and a, and a connection that shows up as, as the chemistry you see in the film. That's really smart of John to do that because he wants that organic connection and chemistry between the characters. What better way than to get you in a room and write music together, such as you say, such an intimate thing to do. This is the, um, kind of the quintessence of John Carney is he's, yeah. he's, what I found is that he's all about catching lightning in the bottle. He doesn't meticulously nitpicky plan everything. And that's, you know, got its um, virtues and its uh, pitfalls, but he makes it work somehow where he just, he shows up and he trusts the process and he trusts his collaborators. And he's like, I don't want to impose my plan on this too much. I want to, uh, I mean, of course he shows up with a plan, but I want to see what happens. I want to see what kind of arises out of this very moment where we are today, right now, with the two of you, and and then capture it. And I think that's a big part of why his movies feel so honest and real, is because he has this spontaneity and this ability to catch these organic moments uh, as lightning in a bottle. Do you recall when you first saw his film once and, you know, Falling Slowly's performance? I remember the butterflies that I felt and I still to this day can remember watching that film. I've seen it many times now. And the same thing happened with this film, particularly during High Life towards the end. Mm -hmm. well, what does that mean to you when you can make an audience feel... I felt the same thing for Mr. Corman. Halfway through that season, I loved that show, by the way. Oh, thanks, I had the man. same feeling, right? That's what, do so you, what does that mean to you when you can actually make an audience feel changed and not unchanged. Yeah, th that's really the point, isn't it? Uh, isn't that what we're all kind of trying to do, is reach out to one another and connect somehow and, and know somehow that I made a difference to you, to him or her. And, um, you know, I think it's also important to balance that because uh, any artist and any human just has to be there for themselves first and foremost. But there's there's that that push and pull of like doing it for yourself, but also really wanting to make that difference to to somebody else. And so it, it's it's hugely gratifying to me. Uh, it so many movies or songs or books or whatever have moved me throughout my life. And so to get to be a part of a movie like this, which you can just plainly tell is really moving to people, uh, it's, it's, it's deeply gratifying. So a little bit about the technical side, you know, there's a lot of transitions between Jeff on the screen, Jeff in real life. Did you have to adjust or adapt the way that you interpreted the script to perform that character between those two ways you interacted with Eve? Um, It, it all came pretty naturally because we've all gotten used to speaking to others through Zoom, you know, because of the pandemic. And I also uh, have, even way before the pandemic, was doing lots of creative collaboration with people online through uh, mm -hmm. Hit Record, this online community that I've been running for years. Um, yeah. So that all kind of came pretty naturally. And, and then I, I love that John didn't just stick strictly to the Zooms, but that he did this cinematic magic trick 
where he's showing you not what's really happening, but what feels like is happening subjectively to the characters and puts them in the same room and even puts them next to each other where they can touch and, and have that, that connection. Because uh, that's, that's what they're feeling. Yeah. Um, I was also wondering, you've done so many different interesting things in your career to date, particularly hit record, something quite different that not a lot of people in your position are doing. Um, and now you are singing on, you know, on a, on a feature film. And I know you all, you've, you've got a bit of a musical background, but how comfortable did you feel on screen just really letting go and singing and being as open as possible? I've yeah. always wanted to make music in a movie. Uh, and so I finally, finally got to. I feel really, really grateful that I got to. And uh, I felt comfortable because of John. Because I... He doesn't suffer any nonsense. Like he's got this incredible, you could say, like his, this incredible bullshit detector, you know. And he's he's got a pretty high standard of taste. And so I felt like, okay, I'm gonna come on and I'm gonna give it my best. And you know, probably some takes I'm gonna suck, and hopefully some takes I'll be good enough. But I can trust that this guy is gonna tell me, and he's gonna, you know, he's not gonna let me. Uh, suck in the movie because he makes good movies. Yeah, he does. And final question, at Sundance, um, it was such a rapturous response. People were clapping along. You got a standing ovation. When you're sitting in that audience and you're feeling that energy, what, what do you remember was your first visceral reaction to that? You're right. That, that was a special night at Sundance. Uh, unique to that very special <clears throat> place and festival and uh, I've been to Sundance a bunch of times it's a, it's a it holds a very dear position in my heart <clears throat> and I've been to a few screenings where you could just tell like whoa this is really landing this is really connecting like uh, the first screening of excuse me the first screening of Brick which was <clears throat> Ryan Johnson's first movie mm -hmm. No one really knew if that movie was gonna work. It's sort of an odd little movie. But audiences just dug it. And you could feel it. And like, oh, this, this is happening. And, um, or, uh, or with the first screening of 500 Days of Summer, same thing. Uh, you could just tell the audience, was just like, it was landing. People are gonna like this movie. And uh, that night with Flora and Son, I felt it as strong as I'd ever felt it, really, to be honest. Like you said, they were, they were literally clapping along with the music at the end of the movie. How often does that happen in cinemas? And um, I can't say I knew. I, I thought this movie was going to be great. I thought it was going to be, you know, it's a John Carney movie. But it's like, it doesn't follow a lot of the conventions that commercial hits follow. It doesn't have a traditional happy ending. It doesn't have a traditional, like, plot structure of a rom-com kind of thing. Uh, it's really its own thing. And oftentimes, when you deviate from those conventions, it doesn't necessarily hit as hard with mass appeal. So I didn't know how this movie would do. I was like, I hope it gets bought at Sundance. I don't know if it will or it won't. And it goes to show what I know, man. Uh, uh, and it also goes to show, I think, people are really yearning for something that feels true and uh john's really good at delivering that he sure is joseph thank you for your time today i really appreciate your insight thank you good to talk to you mm -hmm.